Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. It's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania Zone 6. Well, today I wanted to harvest some of my curly leaf kale and share with you some garden tips. So thanks for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden. Well, sure is a beautiful time of the year. We're approaching the third week of July. It's like 78 degrees right now. It's going to be in the high 80s, but it's a nice low humidity day here. So I just love that type of weather for working out in the garden. You know, the colors this time of year are beautiful out in the garden. Our Lord Baltimore hibiscus flowers are blooming. You know, we have our zinnias blooming. The Stellador daylilies are blooming. And so the garden is just... The painting is coming alive as I've expressed in the past, you know, where the soil is like a blank canvas. When you come out of winter time and the garden's in hibernation, then then you start planting all your seeds and flowers and you know, week by week, month by month, the garden comes alive. The flowers are the painting and the vegetables are part of the painting. And so right now, everything just looks beautiful in the garden and of course the birds are singing their praises. Well, today I, I wanted to harvest some of our tasty and delicious curly leaf kale. And so I, I plant this in my composted leaf mulch that I amend with topsoil, and I buy that from, from Barnside Compost. I buy anywhere from three to five yards per year, and then I add a, a two inch layer, two to three inch layer throughout my whole garden raised beds. And I also have that amended with topsoil because it adds extra minerals to the soil. Well, back in April, I direct sowed some, some seeds of this kale. And you just want to create like a half inch furrow and plant your seeds every couple inches apart. And then keep them well watered. And then, so what I did different this year is when I planted my two rows, eight foot rows of kale, I didn't thin them out this year. I just thought, well, let them do their own thing as an experiment. And then right alongside that one four foot by eight foot bed, I also planted some seedling transplants that I ended up buying from Ray's greenhouse over in Telford. So that's another variety of the curly leaf kale. It seems like the, the leaf is a little bit tighter woven here. The two rows of seeds that I direct sowed out in the garden of this kale I'm just amazed how much they grew and they're just thriving out there in the garden. And so like I said, the, and then the raised bed next to it where I bought the seedlings, I also planted them under my, my row covers, my low tunnel hoop house, because here in Pennsylvania, your brassica plants, your cru cruciferous plants, you need to worry about that little yellow or whitish butterfly you see flying around your garden. That's the cabbage butterfly. They lay eggs under your leaves and they just attack the kale, your broccoli, all your, you know, your collard greens, anything in the crucif cruciferous family you have to worry about. And so even the kale under my row covers are, are thriving right now. And so I need to harvest some of that. And so they're over there in the garden. And you also want to make sure you provide a, you know, four to six hours of sunlight for leafy greens. Anything with a fruit or a root you want to try to provide like eight hours of sunlight, the more the better, I always say. So why don't you follow me over there and we'll go harvest some of this beautiful kale.
So there's that yellow butterfly flying around, if you can see it. That's the one I'm talking about that lays the eggs under your brassica plants. We also have to worry about aphids here in Pennsylvania, but you know, I'm really surprised so far the cabbage butterfly really hasn't done too much damage to this kale, being that it's not under the row cover like these seedlings and transplants are. Another thing I would encourage you to do is make sure your soil's nice and loose, nice and friable. You almost should be able to stick your hand right into the soil that it's that loose. Because the looser the soil, that means the further your root system's gonna spread far and wide, allowing it to take up more nutrients. And a result of that, you're just gonna have a larger, healthier plant where the harvest is gonna be much greater. So why don't we take a closer look at this tasty and delicious and healthy and nutritious curly leaf kale. And so these were the two eight foot rows of seeds that I planted back in early April. And you can see just how they've grown to a massive state. And my wife and I have been harvesting from these for the last couple months. And so why don't I go through this and I'll start harvesting some of this kale here. I use this in my salads almost every day along with my uh, Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard. And so now that I have enough of these kale plants harvested, why don't we take this row cover off this low tunnel hoop house and we'll take a look at that curly leaf kale under this row cover. I see Bailey's joining us today out in the garden. How are you, little boy? These are eight pound Maltese. I have to be careful I don't step on him. He really likes to be close to me underneath my feet. But he's a fun companion out in the garden. Before we start harvesting this kale, let's take a closer look. Kale is considered a pick and come again. In other words, you just want to make sure you continually pick from the outer leaves of the plant. Don't pick that center shoot or leaf, otherwise it's going to stop growing. And so you just want to harvest around the perimeter of the plant. It's also good to go through your kale plants and if you see any dead leaves or rotted leaves, you know, leaves perhaps that didn't get enough sunlight, you always want to make sure you keep your plants well thinned out so you, you can get good airflow around your plants. And another favorite dish of my wife and I is we cook a one pound of quinoa and to that we add onions and garlic and then we we get a bunch of this kale and we just steam it and then we make a big giant bowl of quinoa and and the uh, curly leaf kale and so it's, it's a healthy dish I mean just think of the, nu the nutrition in one of these leaves you have vitamin A vitamin B B1 B2 B3 vitamin C vitamin K it has fiber it's got plenty of protein plenty of calcium and we're told that you can only get protein through animals. And that's definitely a misguided misinformation because the cows, they get their protein from grass. And so these are packed full of nutrition. 
that's one of the reasons I adopted a plant-based lifestyle because as I did a lot of research and study online I discovered that it's the meats and the dairies, the oils, that's the cause of most of your chronic diseases and so my garden has taken on, on a whole new meaning for me once I adopted this plant-based lifestyle because my vegetables are my fuel source for healthy living and of course the health benefits are just amazing how you can reverse and prevent a lot of your chronic disease and of course weight loss is a bonus I've lost around 65 pounds in my blood pressure my cholesterol just plummeted and of course my energy level just skyrocketed because I feel like I've taken on a set of wings because I lost all this extra weight and so let me just pick a few more leaves here from the, these plants because we're going to make that quinoa dish tonight but there's just nothing like having your backyard grocery store walking out 50 feet 100 feet to your garden and just picking healthy organic food and of course the cost is almost nothing you know a pack of seeds cost me two dollars and I only used about half the pack so I think I've picked enough greens you can see how beautiful they look I've also done a few videos in the past showing how you can install these low tunnel hoop houses in your vegetable garden I always encourage gardeners to be proactive in your vegetable garden rather than reactive. Spend a little bit of time, a little bit of money up front and install these low tunnel hoop houses over your brassica plants. They'll thrive under these row covers, you know, that protects them from some of the hot summer heats. And so as you can see from some of my videos how well these plants do under these row covers. Well, I thank the Lord for a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. It's going to be low humidity. I need to go through my garden and do some watering today. I need to, I got some dead leaves on my elephant ears over there and go through my canna lilies and, and deadhead some of those. So if you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim and restore your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based, vegan lifestyle. Well, anyhow, I just want to thank you for joining me out here in the garden today. I hope you have a wonderful day and a bountiful garden season. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.